Okay, so welcome back from Desk of Low. This is the season eight finale, and um, we're missing one of the band members, so he may just pop in right now, so don't mind that. We're introducing when he comes here. And uh, man, I'm going to tell you guys this right now. This band I have in front of me right now, they release one of the most powerful, darkest, inspiring, rock influential, influential albums within the past 15 years. It's also been a passion project for one of the gentlemen here too. So I would like to introduce one of them one by one. So we have the drummer. Man, this drummer has what he calls a unique style called Soul Hawk. And man, if we were to list off all the collaborations he done within the past 20 years, we would be here all night. So man, without further introduction, man, I have the one and only from Michigan, Daru Jones. Pleasure, pleasure. Thanks for and having us on the show. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then this was supposed to be Mr. Mr. Machado's intro, but you know, we're doing after Mr. Jameson. Now with this gentleman here, man, I can't tell you how much times I've listened to this gentleman here. Oh, actually, there's Mr. Machado right here. <laughs> um, I can't I can't tell you how much times that I've listened to this gentleman over and over and over in high school in that combat jack interview while being homeless and just listen to it over and over. He's considered one of the best MCs of our time. And man, he's one humbled iron giant, man. He also loves the movie Iron Giant, too. He's a massive <laughs> Jedi with his words. And man, let me tell you right now, he would tear any MCs that up. Top three of all times in my book. It goes Royce, Pharaoh Crooked Eye. So I kind of gave away the name, but I have the one and only Fairmont. Peace, 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 peace. What's good, man? Thank you so much for that amazing intro, man. It's just amazing. <laughs> it's all facts. And then we have somebody who's from my era, the next young, what Rolling Stone has claimed the next young gun. Man, this guy on the on the guitar, man, he's really killing it on this album, man. And for somebody who is strictly hip hop based, I was like, wow, he's really making me embrace like this rock side that with his solos at the end of Fight or of Amnesia. And man, he's a very talented artist, man. And I'm surprised that he is 29, man. So I have the one and only Mr. Marcus Machado. Peace, me, peace, peace. What's good, man? And I <laughs> <laughs> Man, so you gentlemen have one hell of an album now, too. And this album was in the make for over four years from when I've listened to pretty much every interview that you guys did leading up to this. So, man, I'm just a fan of this album. So, Pharaoh, you're very vocal on having bandmates for this project. So one thing I never really got from your interviews is, can you take me back how you met Daru and Marcus? Mm -hmm. like, and then how it all just came together? I mean, um... Both of these cats been on the scene for a minute and I've been admiring their work for a minute. Um, because Daru had worked with so many of, of my peers from Black Mill to Taleb to different uh, jazz musicians and musicians in general, uh, we would often linked up. I remember one show in particular I did with um, Black Milk and uh, Sean Price. And, uh, Southpaw, Southpaw. We, we got a song together on the Tronic album, and uh, Daru was on drums at that show. And it's just been everything has been kind of illmatic and monumental moments when I think back on them, you know, because all these guys are pretty much my favorite, you know, you know, Black Milk, Taleb, Sean Price, rest in peace. And, uh, you know, as when I was you know, starting this, I was like, knew I needed, you know, more energy, more live energy. And um, I seen Marcus Machado throughout in, in the same fashion, playing with uh, different artists, playing on his own. And he's in my extended family uh, through Family Stan and Jeff and those guys from that band. And I learned about, uh, you know, his, his vibe just, blowing up at the time and um as soon as i heard him play i was like man this 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 would be amazing if this would be a dream come true to to have these two guys in the band and then lo and behold him and uh marcus and daru had a thing together where they was playing which is which is why they're so tight um and so just in terms of keeping in the hip-hop temperament you know with 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 the with the beats or samples or chops or along with the live shit, 
you know, I wanted two, two cats who understand that. Both of these dudes do beats themselves. So, you know, it's not very often you find that they understand what the MC is looking for and, and when to be loose and when to be tight and, you know, why the repeats need to be there and just, just totally understand the, the whole vibe of, of what hip hop is as well as being able to take it out to space. And so um, I prayed on it, you know what I mean? I was like, man, if, if this, if this could come together, how I'm seeing it, it's going to be special. You know, it's going to be real special. So yeah, man. And it definitely turned out special too. So, so because I understand that this project was like in the making for four years too. So uh, Daru and Marcus, can you take me back to like the first session that you ever had with Pharaoh? Because there was tracks like, um, Paladone that was released that didn't make the album because I understand this album was written with the intention to perform live but then you know the whole pandemic hit but it also brought new blessings so let's take it back to the first session where you guys actually all licked up Go ahead, Stokes. okay I'm just remembering um I think we was in Fort Greene and I'm not I think it might have been Grammy night I don't oh, wow. forget we had, we went to um 69 burger <laughs> mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. 69 burger. We had a meeting. Guy invited me and me and um me and Marcus out. I think that's no, it was actually the place by 69 Burger. It was a lounge. Millennials. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um me and Marcus <laughs> had got got invited to come there and meet, meet up with the guy in March. We didn't know we, we didn't know what we were, we were gonna get into, but when we got there, you know, guy in March, they told us about the vision, and me and Marcus we was just like Yo, word. They was wants to tell us about the ideal and the vision that he had to, to do like the rock and roll hip hop project. And um it was it was it was it was really cool. Um Farrell was like one of my top MCs ever, you know what I'm saying? So it was just honored to even get invited um to be a part of the band. I don't think I, I don't even think we I don't even think we knew we didn't have a band name at the time. No, we didn't, no, we didn't have a band name. <laughs> um, it was crazy. We we didn't have shit. We had the ideas. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I knew I wanted to incorporate us producing music, us doing straight live music, and also uh, because of uh, uh, cats traveling, being busy in their, their own projects and bands, and uh, Daru being in Tennessee, I started to gather up, you know, music and tracks from uh, different producers in order to get us started, but letting them know that it was a band, you know, and it couldn't just be like, you know, think about produ producing from a production standpoint of producing a band. So uh, everything kind of had to have a sound to it that could translate live or that I could incorporate the guys into or re reinterpret, you know, from, from Palindrome down. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever heard the live version of that song. Like when I heard the idea um, when 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 Knotts gave me the idea, I was like, you know, this is perfect for us because I I, I kind of know what everybody sounds like, and I know we would would body this on stage, mm -hmm. and everything, you know, from from things that I touched to things that we touched, it needed to sound like, oh man, if we get on stage, we're gonna be able to do this, perform this song really good because that's what we need to win the fans over. So, um, you know, we were sending music back and forth um, mm -hmm. because of that's just technology. And um, we, we were in the studio a lot of the times together, like mm -hmm. for Amnesia and um, mm -hmm. Live Palindrome and um, uh, Magician and a lot of different songs we were sending back and forth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're just venturing into now actually like, booking out time and actually like spending time totally together the three of us in the studio like like an old school you know like an old school band so we're really looking forward to what what that's going to be because it's like we were kind of piecing this together especially after the mm -hmm. pandemic hit and with the distance you know we were like uh could we do this could you do this over could, could you sing this over um different vocals on the songs and just really working on it which is why it took so long is to find the you know kind of perfect things that are that might not be the illest per se but 
the dopest in terms of working with 13 and what we were trying to say with this album. Well, that's what I love about this album now is the different messages within this album now too. Like, like the whole fascination of the number 13 is like the reason why you have the E in your name or you can track asthma at 13 months or you're not supposed to send the 13th row of a plane. I didn't know that one, first of all, but now I do. So so when I listened to this project now too, um, I was listening to one of your interviews and you guys did a McCartney interpolation. I heard one of the interviews and um, McCartney, they, they turned it down. And so you guys had to go and rework the course and um, and there was a big name artist on the hook, but this was before the album came out. So who is the big name artist on the hook? Oh, it was Rag and Bone Man out of the UK. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you doing McCartney? Could you just clear it? Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh. mean, I, I mean, the, the version might find its way to to the internet at some point. <laughs> oh, I, like I, I like those. But, all, much, all right, all right. but not, not 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 to jump in. Much did a really good job at at, yeah. at, at his vocals. He, he 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 did a great job. You know, I'm a fan of Ragnar Bone Man as well, and you know, it would have been great. But I'm glad that we still was able to to, to keep it moving. And much he did a great job. Just to add on top of that, to to, to stick with the question, I remember um we got a chance to work on court. Cult 45 in the studio together. And I, I'll never forget what y'all hearing. That was the first take. Mm -hmm. When I heard oh, that track, wow. yeah. when the, the, those drum fills, that was the very first first take. And yeah. um, even in Marcus and the end part where we go live, all that was like right on. That that, that was a memorable, memorable moment that was really cool. Just something about it. I don't know, I don't know what kind of zone I got in, but that was it was really cool to be. <laughs> You know, to 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 capture all that energy in that yeah. moment. You know, what I'm saying for Code 45, that was definitely one of my favorite um, recording sessions for for one of the tracks of the album. Yeah. Shout out to Knots. Shout out to Knots. Yeah, Knots. And, and Marcus, you could <clears throat> yeah, you could okay. speak to Amnesia and and like replaying that whole thing because uh, you know, uh, Marcus wrote the Marcus rewrote it. You know what I mean? And and Daru wrote the drums. I'm so proud of that record. It's yeah. kind of like a blessing that they turned us down because now it's a totally original song, you know? Yeah, definitely for uh, Amnesia. That was probably one of the songs on the album. I would say Amnesia and Racist. Those were probably the two songs that we really had a lot of different versions and, you know, we really took our time to get it right. And um, as far as for Amnesia, yeah, we were just exploring and just trying to get to the right feel with it and um yeah did a lot of different guitar takes a lot of different you know chops and tried out different stuff but overall totally happy with the whole song you know what i mean how the way it came about and then daru he added the drums and we just killed we just killed it on that track and <coughs> races is another one too that was a lot of different uh takes a lot of different versions and you know it's like a lot of i, I think for me like this album is pretty much you know, if you want to make the best work of art, you got to spend time with it. You know what I mean? And the fact, you know, Monch let us be open to do whatever it is that we wanted to add on to whatever, you know what I mean? So we would try different things. If it worked, cool. If it didn't, then we keep exploring <coughs> the right, you know, to the right field with it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much it. Yeah, that was Amnesia track, like the intro. I like, see, I didn't know it was an Amnesia. I thought it was a totally different track. So wow okay i would like to hear what that are, but because like i fell in love with what we hear now because like the story behind that the intro i mean sort of outro just the way that the guitar riffs it's like i can see myself like with my shorty like it's like mm. riding out into the sun <laughs> but um but so but with this project now too um i got individual questions for daru and marcus um because i i did i i know a lot about pharaoh but i don't know too much about you guys so i have to do my research on you so Daru um coming up in the Pentecostal church um mm -hmm. in Michigan now too with your gospel background now too did it take like some convincing like to get on a song called like 666 because like it's, it's, <laughs> it's that was one of my biggest questions I was like what if you have to like like convince like fair out to convince him I was like man like there's gonna be some dark like tones in this but like there's a deeper meaning behind the 666 though that's a really good question. And I actually joked about this in one of my interviews because my mom, she's a missionary 
and she be checking, she be checking my socials, and I was like, I was waiting to get that call from mom's like, son, what's going on? Six 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 five. But I always tell people, um, don't judge a book by its cover. Like it's it's definitely a message in the music, and and we definitely you know, the goal is to expose the ugliness of what we've been dealing with. So you know, I'll just say, um, I wasn't afraid of it. It was some things that I didn't understand in the creative process. But now that the project is out, I can only respect Munch because he he would make he was like the quarterback. You know, we had we may not understand the, the plays that he was trying to give, you know, I was just you know, but it makes sense now, you know what I'm saying? And we wanted to keep um because Munch has a, a huge hip hop fan base and they used to hear him in the mobile boom bap tracks. You know, yeah. I think he wanted to, to try to marry the the production with the live element, you know what I'm saying, and, and not lose people. So regarding the um regarding the um six 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 the 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 lyrics, you know, when you listen to the lyrics, you'd be like, oh snap, like this is really it's like a horror movie, but it's like what we what we're dealing with right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. it's just amazing that um, you know, I, I just know that what I do, I feel like, you know, I'm I'm still although I'm a believer, I still feel like um I use my gifts to, you know, to channel a positive energy, you know what I'm saying? And, and I don't, I don't, I just think that um, what Munch was speaking on, it, it wasn't nothing that was false. It was stuff, stuff that was doing it. <laughs> and we just, we just have to be the person. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to be in our positions and speak out on these topics because we put ourselves in a situation where we could, we, we could, we can really get some heat because we all, you know, I'm on different sides of the, of the field. Like I'm working in, in a, in a rock and roll country. You know, I'm working with all types of cultures. So you, you never know who's, you know, who's a part of these different, you know, sides of the field. And, 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 and all it takes is for one person in one of those cultures to get, you may not understand it. Then I, that, that, I just thought that my endorsements may have been in jeopardy because of, of some of the, 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 the language. But at the same time, it's like what he's speaking, you know, is, is basically what's happening. So, you know, um, uh, I hope I'm hope, hopefully I'm answering the question. Oh, yeah. I, I wasn't I wasn't really afraid of the topics because it's just like I said, it's stuff that we'll be dealing with, and hopefully that answers the question. It does, yeah. it does. Because I because I was curious about that too. I'm like, man, instead of just comment all these interviews, just ask the man himself. So that'd be yeah. easy. <laughs> so um, yeah, but like like it, 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 not to cut you off, like it, it, back back in the days on a kernel thinking, just seeing just seeing the six six letters, I would automatically ran from it because it's something that you see like in the Bible. <laughs> Well, you just hear so much bad, you know, you know, even like words like exorcism, people, they associate those words with a certain thing, but really, you know, it's, it's a lot of meanings behind the thing and, and it's, it's a conceptual project. So, you know, you just got to don't judge a book by its cover, just, you know, check it out. And that's what I've done. I didn't judge it. And I dug into the lyrics and I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't no different than what I was seeing in church. People will be, you know, getting prayed, getting prayed over to get the get the get those spirits and those demons the same thing the same mm -hmm. thing so uh, i was very familiar with that if that makes any sense no it does it does because like people have to know there's both sides of it too especially with music now too it's not like music has so many different emotions now too like mm -hmm. especially with instruments now too like kind of goes into the question for mr marcus right here man when i was doing my research on you um you had a synthesizer guitar and your brother, he had the guitar and you guys used to battle. Sometimes you would go on the drums and you would mm -hmm. battle your brother with the guitar. So I was curious if you ever got into like, you know, a beat battle with instruments with Daryl mm -hmm. or Pharaoh during one of these sessions. <laughs> no, no, no beat battles, but but sometimes <laughs> we would switch. Uh, Daru, one time I jumped on the drums and Daru jumped on the bass. That was, that was a bit of <laughs> stuff. Just messing around, but um, no. For me, come from a musical family, same as Daru. Uh, you know, my mom, she was uh, she wasn't a musician, but her, she was like an A and R. She could tell you any song that was a hit on the radio and stuff. And her record collection was crazy. And my father, he was a musician. He played a little bit of guitar. So you know, and I come from a big family. So like, my sister is a producer. I produce as well. We all play different instruments. So you know, it's, that's where it comes from, pretty much. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's a it's a multi-talented family, would you say? 
Somewhat, somewhat. <laughs> like, what I like about this album and like having bandmates like with you, Pharaoh, and Daru now too. Um, yeah, because this album was made to be formed live, but the pandemic happened. But it also brought many uh, in studio performances that were completely amazing. That I, because like, the, okay, for example, like the Scarecrow track, I like the Stephen Colbert version live because mm. you guys can change like little chins, like little things, like how Derry did on the second verse of Scarecrow. When that's, 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 that's why I knew ahead of time this would lend itself to that. Like, you know, I find myself watching those clips and listening to the song, especially the way our, our brain, you know, just absorbs information now. Um, the little change he does with the hi-hats and the, the way that... Uh, 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 Marcus makes the song even harder than, than the original, the way he, he plays it and the effects that he had, even grungier, it's grungier than the original shit, you know? And uh, it, it's just it's just ill. And I enjoy performing live. And I'm, I'm one of those dudes who are like, you know, every time it, it could be something new. You could, you could strive to have the thing perfected <clears throat> but if you're really in a vibe, you could catch the spirit, you know, on, on a given night. And, you know, you can feel that thing on stage and it, it, it flows throughout the, the crowd mm -hmm. because the, you got harmonics, drum harmonics, tones, voice harmonics, instruments, uh, guitar, tones. And these things create, uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, no Sorry, smart no these, these things create harmonics and they 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 send they actually send real vibrations, you know, live instruments that you don't get sometimes when it's just flat coming out of the the speaker. You know, you could catch those vibes if the if the if the song is ill, but you know, you you start getting like uh you, you know, organ harmonics and guitar harmonics and drum going on and catching those pockets. It just feels different. And I knew that it was time for me to, to put into, you know, what I was feeling in my heart in that perspective. You know, it's something I've been thinking about for a long time. Obviously, I'm not the first, obviously, but um, uh, some about the, the, the thinking with even songs is, is for me as simple as Scarecrow. Um, there's something that could come out of it in the live performance that you won't get in the flat space of the record. You know, the record is insane, but performing it, it's just drops and, you know, you never know where the, the organicness of that drop could come in or the, the way that guitar decay or resonate. And if you catch that vibe, that's the Holy Ghost. Like that's, that's, the, that's the realness of it. That's mm -hmm. when the spirit comes into the room and um, you know, a lot of a lot of cats don't dabble in those waves, and it's something that I was itching to to, to try. And we just scratching the surface right now, so I'm super excited. Yeah, and also too to add on to what Marks was saying, like a lot of these arrangements is just going off with each other. It's like having a conversation, like what we're doing right now. It's the same thing with instruments, and also too with the three of us. You know, usually a basic trio is always bass, drums, and guitar. But the fact that you have MC, drums, and guitar, you would think, oh, I need a bass. So like for me, for example, the playing style for this group is totally different than anything that I've done because I'm playing guitar and bass at the same time using the Octavia. So where that brings that kind of more bulk. And then the combination with me and Daru, what we have, where we go off with each other, we kind of make it like a band of gypsies meets Led Zeppelin, Black Woo! Zeppelin. You know what I mean? And in months, you know, that's the icing on the cake. You know what I mean? And just the fact of uh, being in this group, you know, from a kid since, what, 10, 11 years old, I had all of my stuff. You know what I mean? So, and Daru, he's always been my favorite drummer. So for me, it's like a kid in the candy store. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, and just the fact that not only they're incredible human beings, but they call these two guys my brothers, you know, it's definitely a blessing. And, um, you know, don't just like what Daru said, don't judge a book by its cover. You know what I mean? 13, a lot of people get 
scared of the mass and they think everything is saying ten, you know, Satan and all this stuff. But yeah. the world that we're living in isn't so pretty, pretty, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's kind of dark right now. So that's where that whole thing comes together. So when we get together, it's like this church. You know what I mean? Just in a different way. It's still the same word. You're still getting the same word, but through instruments and vibrations, you know? 100%. It, it's, it's, it's really about battling that darkness. And, and instead of, like, in this new age, instead of kind of doing it, um, you know, the way it's been approached, it's coming, like, let, let's, let's meet this thing head on, you know, because we've been, we've been trying to do it the same way for a long, long time now, you know, and nothing's changing. As you can see with the latest couple of incidents uh, that's in the media right now, and it's just like, come on, man, like, you know, holding hands ain't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to have some real conversation, some real action, and, you know, bring attention to it. And, you know, you know, uh, 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 album cover, with, with people holding hands, that ain't gonna grab no <laughs> attention. You know, I'm like, come on, man, you know, y'all dudes, you know, this stuff is evil, man. You know, it, it's real evil. What's on this record is, is music and concepts. But you talking about, you know, kids that's 20 years old and, and years and years of the same, same thing over and over. Uh, that, that's coming from an ugly place. You know, to outright politically just say, you hate, you hate us. It's hard, man, it's emotional. It, 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 it's, uh, you know, it's a hard thing. Like, you know, I, I literally, you know, when I'm driving now, I'm a grown ass man that, that pay taxes. You know, I look at the time, I'd be like, oh, it's getting late, it's getting dark, you know? mind your turns put on your signals and whatever and i mean you know you shouldn't you shouldn't have to be like think about losing your life or a traffic mm -hmm. mistake mm -hmm. it's a traffic mistake yeah mm -hmm. like one of the things like when we see like i think like with this new generation of kids growing up like we learn to accept one another. We're not so standoffish as like other generations. I'm not saying all generations are, but like we're more accepting of our, of our backgrounds. And because I was told like, well, human, we all bleed the same color. Like, I just, and that's why I, I like this album because it brings awareness to issues like that, like with the Cold 45 track now too, because it, it talks about like how Trump has the influence, like this huge, this cult-like persona over a huge chunk of Americans that isn't changed overnight. And it's bringing awareness to like the corrupt political system as a whole. So like, like that's why I think like this music needs to be told because it's not gonna be just holding hands and stuff like that. Somebody has to go there and talk about these subjects in an art form like this. And that's why I think like this album came out so perfect. So with like with one of my questions now too, like even like with the concepts, like 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 with the whole thirteen concept now too, like I never knew like there was so much different meanings. Like I didn't even know there was a phobia of being afraid of it. Like die, I may say this wrong. So sorry, dissect the co phobia. Is that how you say it? It's, it's, yes, it's tres, it's tresca, or tresca, but it's tresca, tresca decophobia, and it's the fear of the number thirteen, and you know it. That number's been there uh, with me all my life. And so uh, we were going for, for other things for the band that were taken. And I, I, I originally was just trying to get a one and a three for, for the name of the band, but it was taken and we couldn't get it patented and, and trademarked and all of this. And so I was just trying to come up with something that's easy to remember, even though it's difficult to spell how we spelled it. Oh, yes. Right. <clears throat> when you say 13 now, there's a, there's a couple of things that come to mind, but in a, couple of, in, a, in a couple of more months, when you say 13, you're going to think of us. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, see, like, because it has so many different meanings to you. So what about you and Mark? I mean, what about Daryl and Marcus? Does the number 13 mean any, anything, like, near and dear to you, like how it does to Pharaoh? Go ahead, Daryl. Um, 
on Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> right, and all and, and all of that shit. Like I, I like it's, it's 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 something that I've been dealing with. You know, organized confusion and number, but just as a number, I know people that it's intriguing to people if you know all of these uh, uh superstitions and stuff. So you know, all like even in sports, like my favorite baseball players, basketball players, they they have the number. So even when I was following sports, I'm like, oh, he's wearing my number. So it's just it's just a number thing. And then organized confusion, Prince's number was eight. And and numerology is important to me. Like we're three. So if you look at the logo, the three is really included in the logo with the with the one going through it. Oh, yeah. And it's the one and three. And the three make one unit. So once I started doing the science on the 13, um, it, it's just it's just insane how how it 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 makes even more sense now, you know. And um, you know, these guys were definitely dead set on it being three. Like I would be like, Daru, we should add it. Nah, 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 nah. Keep it three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, Marcus, we need to that. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Keep it three, keep it three. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, right, right. Yeah. But I think also for me, uh, yeah. also for me, like uh, 13 has always been the number. Like I played basketball when I was a kid. My basketball jerseys was 13. My sisters, my oh, sisters really? played basketball. Their jerseys was 13. So, you know what I mean? There was a lot of that number always following around. So when Bonds brought the concept and the idea, you know, I didn't look at it as, you know, kind of like, you know, satanic or nothing like that. It's like, it was like it, destiny it made, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made sense. It totally made sense. Just and a fly it, ass number, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the power of three, you know what I mean? Like what Mont said to add on, that's the, that's really the yeah. main thing, you know what I mean? So definitely. And like, like, I understand people are afraid of like 13. Like I'm afraid of killing bees, no Wu Tang, but like, you know, I have to go. <laughs> no, but like, but like there's other things out there. Like that's what I like about this project is like um you're you're rapping from the perspective of 13. And like I can't I just like the what Combat Jack said is like this man read bullet rap. So I'm like, I wonder if he's gonna <laughs> like number <laughs> rap or something like that with this, because like damn low, you don't hear it. nobody rhyming from this perspective of a number. So like going into like the the uh even like the before we get off this even like with how you reference like the organized stress thirteen track um what it kind of like mind fucks part of my French mind fucked me I was like did he just reference like stress the thirteen song and then once you do it's like Easter egg within this album and that's what I like. right right so like, <clears throat> to, to like the musician another concept you put your you, you talk about the real, the reality of the school shootings in the United States and you put yourself in the, in the perspective of somebody who's being bullied and, you know, ends up, you know, shooting up the school. So me and Marcus, we're from the same era. So what I was curious about is for you and Daru, because you're from the same era, have you guys seen as many of school shootings as me and Marcus have in our generations? We have. I mean, from yeah. Columbine to, mm -hmm. you but know. But what is worse as they are to like, because like, it seems like a more, like, I hate to say it, a more frequent thing, like, going on. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at uh, the mental health in America combined with the gun issue in America, it's a, it's a mixture and, and, a, and a cocktail of, it's going to be bad news at the end of the day, uh, you know, as as the 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 pandemic kind of comes down and quiets down a little bit, and a quarantine opens up a little bit, and people are being let out, you're seeing a rash of like unstable and like um, mm -hmm. people who are mentally unstable just going back into society. Um, where they weren't taken care of during the pandemic because of the COVID and different things. And you're going to see an a, a array of these different type of events again, in my opinion, as well as just, you know, people who are stressed and, you know, depressed and going through it financially and all of these things. And how am I supposed to survive or make it or just chemically, you know, not well. 
And it's something that uh, millions and billions of dollars need to go into because it's been an issue for a long time now. Like mm -hmm. in all of these cases, like what type of mind, you know, goes to a concert and snipes, you know, 45 people, like mm -hmm. you know, what type of mind does that? Uh, you know, it, it, it's just, and the political climate doesn't doesn't help with with the division. So this mixture of the divide that we have in this country politically and racially, with with mentally people, you know, mentally unhealthy people, and combined with the pandemic, and combined with not being able to uh, have social contact with people, mm -hmm. I, I just. I'm afraid of what this mixture is going to bring in the oncoming summer and oncoming years. If it's not addressed, I mean fully addressed, and we you can't just uh, you know sweep it under the rug. And that's what we've been doing. Like it needs to be talked about. It needs to be addressed. Money needs to be you know uh, put into it. And uh, I know I'm going off on a tangent, but it's it's been many cases I've seen. You know, going back to what was happening with the police now, where uh, you know a family, or you'll see a homeless guy in in the city in Manhattan or in the street, and you could tell he's disheveled and he's homeless and he's not in his right mind. And the police would get called, and they'll be talking to him like he's supposed to be understanding. And I'm like, dog, clearly this this man is not, you know, he's he's not right right now. You need professionals in those situations or specialists in those situations to deal with those situations where these people are not harmed as well, as well as, these, as some of these people are doing harm to others right now. And it's just crazy. And it, it's something that uh, needs to be addressed in, in the focus of uh, our government and legislation. And see, like, like, even like with that, like, you're not afraid to talk on these topics, even on your PTSD album now too. I think it was the we mm -hmm. talked about the guy going back and lighting up his job, and I was like, I was like, oh, yo, he he did rap about like this type of things before, but it's like, it's more like a of a better perspective, as you would say now too, because that actually happened. Mm -hmm. So so um, because I, I know everyone's pressed for time where because with the interview, so I have two more questions, and then we'll try to wrap this up. So. Mm -hmm. Um, as we're coming into this album now too with Amnesia, like this is where everybody shines now too. I was going to add this in where I was adding the McCurney questions, but I wanted to add it in while we're talking about the songs. Is this like inspired by the perspective of a soldier who was injured and it was making him have memory loss and the hook is like him saying goodbye to his wife? Or is this like was inspired by a family friend? Because the more I hear about it, it's like I think about it's this soldier with memory loss. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and I love the drums in the outro, guys. I love, I love the beginning and the outro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's just really Thank the, uh, the perspective of, you know, someone who who's going through early dementia, early al Alzheimer's, and I, I wanted to give them some background to to the depth of the character, so. Um, it, it has more to do with just losing your memory than it does how he lost his memory. Even though I, I allude to some things that could have happened to him and he could have been injured at, at war or whatever, or he's a soldier. I just so much did that to uh, build up the character development of, of this character by starting off like, you know, that this is a human and he may have served and, um, you know, he has a relationship, but it's really based on me thinking about what would it be like, you know, to, to tr it, it, it really started off as kind of like a fun, funny line. It's, if you listen, some of the lines could be funny if the music wasn't so sad, like an MC rhyming who has amnesia and he's like on stage and he's like mid rhyme and he's like looking at his fucking hand to remember the lines, you know what I mean? And so uh, I started writing it from that perspective and I was like, no, nah, this is a deeper thing than that. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I, I, I wake up in the middle of the night, have sleep 
and, you know, go in the bathroom or grab the wrong thing or go down the stairs and look in the refrigerator and be like, what the hell I'm looking in the refrigerator for? I forgot already. You know what I mean? And with, with this ADHD society that we're in, it's shit's kind of scary. You know what I mean? So, you know. And, and like, like that's what I like about like how I never knew this song was reworked so many times now too. So I really hope that original gets uh, quote unquote leaked or to the public. <laughs> now, like, Cause even like the beginning, like the way these drums come in or like, and just like the way the outro is now too. It's like, man, I wonder how much time they had to like, just sit down. Like, okay, this is the one we're putting on the album. That's all one take down roof shit right there, man. Yeah, oh, man I appreciate God, that. <laughs> how, many, how, how many cuts did you do in one take on this, uh, Marcus and Darren? Man, I don't even know. Yeah. I, mean, I think fight. I think for me, fight was one take. Mons, I think you did fight. Yeah. In, oh my god! Yeah, fight was oh yeah. God. Yeah. Because Mons, I think, yeah. I think before, I think that was like one of the first tracks, if I'm not mistaken, when I, when me Mons met up in the studio and he was just playing me just different ideas and stuff for the project, and I remember we were sitting on fight, and then you know Mons, what I appreciate about Mons too with this whole. Um, project is like he let us be you know what I mean like with the hip-hop and the rock usually sometimes it's like you have you know a regular guitar solo at the end whatever but it wasn't that it was like he said you know what if I'm going to be spitting all these bars and I'm taking it up here I want you to kind of like answer me so my position is like to be the verse also two verses just a guitar solo oh. so the fight I had to really you know you're talking about a lot of things so it's like if I'm going to end it out you got to bring the fire. And I remember that we was in the studio and yeah, that was like one take. Yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. yeah, for, for me, for yeah, yeah, big, big, big kudos to, to Mons too for being very instrumental, yeah. you know, on, on, on the concept on what he you know wanted. At the same time, respecting what we can do individually and he wanted us to bring our sauce to the table, but he still, at the end of the day, you know, was very instrumental. Yeah. And, and some, like I said, sometimes we didn't understand. I'll never forget when the, um, I may get in trouble for this, but I'll never forget what a palindrome. <laughs> <It's> palindrome. <laughs> palindrome artwork. My boss is like, yo, I got the perfect cover. <laughs> palindrome. Yo, when that palindrome art cover came out, I was like, son. Pause. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like I call months, I'm like I, I I don't know if I said I'm not posting this image. I think I'm trying to make my own my own flyer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always been cool, months. I, I like this situation because we're, we're like brothers, and it's like we respect each other so much. But it's still cool, you know. Like when you have a band and you have a family, sometimes you have little. But it ain't never been. It ain't never been that serious. It's always we've always been able to talk through things and just like, bro, let's go with this image. <laughs> <laughs> and see, like, it's good that you guys can always joke around and sound like this. Like, you know how bands are like, oh, this guy has it, cause like, you know, like how Pharaoh, like, you know how they say like the lead guy has a Pharaoh, like this guy has an ego, and that's what I like. I like about this band, like, there's no ego. Everyone got no, to not at all, not, mm. not at all. And like I say, even with the live performances, like with. Tiny Dust and Scarecrow, a lot of that stuff you're hearing, that's like one take. You know what I mean? We'll come up with an idea and we say, let's try this and just go with it. You know what I mean? Like I just smashed it out 17 minutes. All right, all right, we done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't really like, when it came down to it, like we didn't really spend a lot of time like, okay, it has to be like that. And that's what I like because it's like, your Mondays and Fridays are different. You know what I mean? And it's really like a mood. You definitely don't want to play these songs the same. You know what I mean? So, you know, once things open up and we tour, you know, you will see, you know, it's going to be different, a lot of different versions, live versions of these songs, you know what I mean? Depending on how the way we're feeling. <laughs> Yo, I can't also, wait to get another version of Kill Em All Live. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's also, also to add to, I think we were originally supposed to put the project out a while ago, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, it was just, I just, I just think that um, I wouldn't trade it. I'm glad we came out with the project when it did. Because it was right when, you know, it was right when a certain vibe was going on. But, yeah, I just got to respect much in his vision because, like I said, we didn't always understand. But now I have a lot more respect for, you know, for his vision. And I'm glad we waited 
I'm glad we waited, you know, and, and March wanted to make sure we had the right type of rollout because as you know, nowadays, you know, with records, people's attention spans, you know, we, we, we wasn't trying to do this as, as a gimmick, but we definitely wanted to make sure that we had the, the setup. March wanted to make sure we had the visuals because it was like, when we were seeing certain things happening, happening in our world, it was like, yo, this is the perfect time to put this song out. You know, and, but but like, but Monty, like, Monty was like, nah. He was like, we gotta wait, <laughs> gotta wait. <laughs> well, like even the time for like Cold Forty Five, like 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 that was just impactful right there. Like and like insane, was, like, yeah, insane, yeah. Right. And um, you know, I noticed that time and the way we perceive it is has changed over the last two years in the sense that um, even with the rhymes that I wrote, you know, that those lines are from years ago. Uh, you know, these records, you know, we were working on for a while, they weren't like current events, but you gotta know that even now with a song like Colt 45, you know, dude is not going away. So yeah. it, we, we were able to take advantage of the political climate, but dude is not going away and the cult is not going anywhere. And you would think that um, you would think that on the conservative side, they would pivot, or at least I thought they would pivot and make a make a play to just get more votes. But it seems right now that they have uh, just deviated back to voter suppression and division, based on what I'm seeing, and um, you know, it's just mind blowing. But that's what it is. So we're gonna be dealing with that shit for the for the for the foreseeable future anyway. Yeah, because just because he's gone doesn't mean like that influence that he had is just gonna like go away when he goes. Like it's still gonna be around. That's why I like tracks like how you rhyme from like the perspective of a racist. I was like, wow, that's really like you may get some flack for that, but it's just the way that because you're fair monster, you could pull it off. I'm like, nah, he's good. That's what I like. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of shit on the record that uh it's bold, but you know, you know, words and and things. And I, I hope I've, I, I, I hope that I've garnered enough gravitas that people know that it's art. Is why, which is why it was important for me to uh, show the guys and show the fans that we're handling the project from an artistic perspective, because even with songs like that, you know, it's harsh and. Um, I have all, you know, my my best music friends and friends are, are are Jewish and gay and 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 all the rest of it. And um, you know, there's some hard shit being said on on these songs. But I think the reality of of you know telling someone you're going to tase them and then you really shoot them is harder and and evil, more evil. And so it's important to bring about these things, to have these conversations and to bring about, you know, the ugliness of it so that you feel the ugly in the song in, in so many different ways. And so what does that sound like? You know, what does that feel like? And, uh, you know, we got, we got a visual for racists coming. We got a visual for kill, kill, kill coming a full animated short animated short film coming for that and, um and? we we just been we just been grinding and it, it's it's amazing how the universe works in the sense that the fact that we were separated and the pandemic had people quarantined you know has you like how how are we going to get this music out to the people and what's the different ways to do this, you know, from exact, like my background now with the action figures wasn't like this in the beginning, but since I started having to do a bunch of Zooms, um, one, one of my, one of my friends online, um, was like, yo, your, your collection is whack. You need to step your game up. <laughs> and I started, I started getting more and more figures for these Zooms. Cause this is where, this is the only place in, in the house that's cool to do it. And, um, you know, because of that, I got into this, this Marvel world and there's like Marvel interviews coming out 
we're turning the uh we're turning the video into a comic book oh the nft is that we gave we're me doing the whole nft thing with it and it's just different worlds and uh you know whereas if everything was straightforward i don't know if we would have got garnered the attention of the 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 the, the, the tiny desk the title the colbert just the online presence and have that uh to have all of that content you know i posted something the other day that's old and people were like yo what's this when's the album coming out i'm like it's out the... yeah i'm like it's out bro like that's that's how the algorithm works and then and then you get the 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 the, the, the your peers and 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 the in the in the gods and the kings commenting you know buster rhymes is commenting and lupe is commenting and it pushes it through the, the 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 algorithm because you know um you know ig reduced the algorithm down to you know a smaller percentage so even though you may have a hundred followers if you post something only three of them get to see it yeah but if five people comment then they'll push it more towards all your hundred followers seeing it and this is to get you to spend money on advertising if you want the full range of your audience to to see what you're doing when you're doing it. And I get that at the same time, it tells me that this is not a one week, two week thing. This is not a one month thing anymore. If, if we spent this much time doing all these different versions, I was like, yo, just based off the different songs, we could rock this out for six months to a year and literally drop this animated video or the racist video and have fans of mine still be like, yo, I didn't even know he had an album out. There's one dude who who followed me, who who um helped style me for my manager's wedding. He said the other day, yo, when's the album coming out? Like <laughs> dude, like it blew my mind. Like I used I used to get upset, but they don't see it. You know what I'm saying? It's like Instagram now, is like blocking people from seeing it. But it likes so, the big booty women right. instead of the music. So it's a constant, 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 constant push. Like I clicked on one thing, saw another thing, and and uh saw something from a from an A-list artist. And it was a video, and I was like, I didn't even know they still did music. And this is like a upper echelon, you know, no artist uh, yeah. I think it was like Chris Brown like I know he still does music but I was like I didn't know that you know this video is crazy I never seen this before so if you don't follow that person how would you know and and then everybody's you know preoccup preoccupied in their own world so how do you reach your, your fan base I say this to say no pandemic no quarantine now we're scheming on yo we got to get we got to get these uh performances these in studio performances how are we else we going to reach these people if it was free and we had the gig <clears throat> you know how many gigs we would have had to do to reach 100,000 people like oh. you know the the tiny desk shit is over 100,000 wow it's over the, the fight video is over 100,000 like I, i'm just saying and that's not a lot, but I'm just saying, oh, even if we're so doing, long. yeah, even if we're doing 2,000 seaters, you know, that's a bunch of shows you got to do to get in front of that many people. And what we wanted was those fans, those people to be like, yo, I never heard of these guys before. Like, literally, I wanted to pe people to say, um, I wanted people to say, never heard of Farrell Marsh before, but this band is dope. These guys are ill. Who's the rapper? The rapper's dope. Who's these guys? Reach new people. Mm -hmm. It's hundreds of thousands of new fans of music over the last five years, two years. Every year there's, there's new 25 year olds that's like, yo, I'm looking for the hardest, craziest shit that I could work out to, that I could skate to, that I could dance to. And um, they're out there and um, 
I was like, yo, I want those people too. Like, I feel like this album, if I feel like if if I was 25 and I skated or played ball or Hell yeah. or went to graffiti, <laughs> I, I would be like, yo, this is my shit right here. You know, and, and that's why I'm excited about the project because the industry is a bunch of lies. They, they, they're always trying to vulture. They're always trying to steal. They're always trying to keep art out so they can reproduce the same thing over and over and over. When you come with something new, it's frightening to them because they're, they're thinking, how are we going to reproduce this if it does pop off? And, and my thing is, when I was... When I was 25, when I was 18 in high school, I was just discovering, you know, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Jimi Hendrix, and getting into that. And it was already from the 70s. And I'm like, yo, this shit is, this shit is, you know, old. But why is it the flyest shit, you know? And, and, and why don't they play this on the regular? It's just, you know, certain stations and whatever. And it's just how the industry is. And I know that the industry pushes a demographic. They're like, yo, if you're, if, if you're, you know, this artist, then y'all shouldn't be listening to it. And if y'all these people, then y'all shouldn't listen to that. And you should only listen to simple ass shit that you could do a stupid ass TikTok to. And it's just not the truth. It's, it's, no, it's not it's, the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like <laughs> stupid ass TikTok. Yeah. But like, okay, so I know you guys are pressed for time, so I'll wrap this up. But that's what you did with me, with Marcus and Daru. Because I paid attention to you for years. But when you started working with these gentlemen, I'm like, so if Pharaoh's co-signing and working with them, let's see what they're about. And then I found out so much about Marcus, about his background of guitarist and, you know, being like so young and accomplished and like Emmy, like working on HBO documentaries, scoring them. And then Daru, Mr. Superstar drummer with Jack White, Queen Latifah, like, like as I can go on. So it's like, it made me like a fan of these two gentlemen because you worked with them. So with that being said, like, you guys are always welcome on this platform. I want to have a conversation with all three of you separately sometime in our future. Not like next week or something like that, but in mm -hmm. the so we can dive into everybody's discography. So that's dope. Appreciate so, you, man. Thank you. Hey, man. Um, do you guys have any last words uh before I let you go? Uh go pick up the album. Go get the album out right now. <laughs> Who wanted to buy it like we did? Get that money. Get the crazy exactly. lady up too. Yeah, I wanted, Where I you at? To say, um, and then, uh, Darren, uh, you have anything before you want to say? Yeah, just thank, thanks for having us on your platform. And this is um, this is historic historic moment. This is our first band interview together, so this is, you you get the chance to Christian, you know, oh, bring it yeah. <laughs> first band interview. <laughs> um, also, um, with with Mont, um, um, we although we respect each other, I'm, I'm I have a lot of gratitude because he couldn't pick any other musicians because. He knows a, a long list of, of people, you know, that are great, but I'm, 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 I'm thankful for the opportunity. Doesn't matter what I've done. It does, but it don't, you know what I'm saying? But I'm thankful for the opportunity for this, for this project. And I'm glad that we've been getting some, some love, you know, from like what he said, from, um, from Buster Rhymes and some of his, some of the, the leading, you know, peers, the upper, the upper echelon, you know, in the game. So we're, we're thankful. We're thankful that people that's taken out the time to not judge a book by its cover and, and just check the music out. You know, and then you know the lyrics, and just check it out. We will appreciate it, and we hope you guys, you know, will rock with us. And stay tuned for for, for what's to come. <laughs> yeah. And then that's for you, Pharaoh. Do you have any last words before I let you guys go? Magnificent day for exorcism. Thirteen is Marcus Machado. Pharaoh <laughs> 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 Mike. We are known as Thirteen. And then Cop that album. What city are you in, man? What, what city are you in right now? I mean, Prince Albert to scratch when it's uh, it's not well known, but it's gonna be well known yeah. one day. Just to hopefully, him... hopefully we'll get through this, man, and we could come play for the people. You know what I mean? I would have to trap Sask too, because no one did, they don't have gigs here. But we'll make that happen, Sask too. And then before I let you guys go, we are recording on April thirteenth. Wow. Yeah, man. Not that crazy about like the whole thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. oh my God. <laughs> this is another 13 I want to talk about, but I don't I don't want to give away my spot, but it's a lot of 13 similarities in the situation. It's crazy. 